welcome back to a new year 2021 hopefully it's going to be better for everyone um everyone's staying safe out there i hope i've been having way too much um fun with my new toys i've been i got for christmas hopefully everyone got some decent stuff for christmas see this one um actually doubles up as a car also goes into the lake i've been having fun chasing around the uh swans and the birds just messing around over the christmas period so one thing I do want to do this year is I want to make some videos that are a lot more fun to make, um, a lot more um, entertaining as well. Uh, obviously, you've still got the cars, still the educational videos, but I just want to make uh, some videos that are fun and enjoyable. So if you leave some comments in the comment section of what you would like to see, even if it's away from the cars, uh, maybe some dares, um, not stupid dares that obviously are dangerous and I can't do. But some uh, interesting stuff, some exciting stuff that you'd want me to do in the future. Let me know in the comments section. I'll be up for that. So it's a lovely winter's evening over by the lake today. I'm just trying to make uh, some friends with this swan. But I don't think he's very happy about that. Um, I've just got a lovely GoPro setup now as well, which means I'll be, allowed, I'll be able to get some great clips, some driving footage, some point of view footage of the cars in the future. So that's going to help me massively. Also got a mic for that as well, so I can get some sounds of the turbos and that in the engine bay. I'm going to include a few clips of the car that I've been doing some testing on. Um, in the, Later on in the video, you'll see some clips. I put up a story the other day on my Instagram asking what people want, and a lot of people did want point of views. So if you ain't joined me on my Instagram, go and add me on there because I'm always putting stories up. So it's oil change time while we're doing mundane jobs at the beginning of the year. Just obviously the usual oil that I go for is uh, the Mobile One 2000, 1040, and uh, also genuine oil filter as well. There's the part number for that. And um, these are like long life ones. They're very, very good. Probably the best oil filter for these engines. Uh, if you want to go and get one, they're part number from GM. I think they're only like £3.50, £4. They're not expensive at all. It's a no-brainer just to use a GM item. And I just replace the oil super regularly. I always use semi-synthetic oil. Um, I don't use fully synthetic on these cars. I also don't use the recommended 530 on the Z20LEH, which are from GM for emissions purposes. I always go with a 1040 semi-synth and uh, get a lot less oil leaks. So obviously there's a the Z let does suffer from oil leaks, especially as it gets older. When it's new and you've got fresh gaskets, it's absolutely fine. One of the good things about the GM oil filter kits is you obviously get your oil filter, but you still get this O-ring. This O-ring is for the sump bolt. You can see in here, there's an O-ring that goes around here. I don't know if you can see, but it's damaged, even though that was new on the last oil change. So instead of replacing the whole plug, just replace the seal. So you literally just wedge the seal out. I just use a little bit of a, I just use a blade to just cut it so it's easier to get out because they get stuck in there. And then just prise that out. I'll just cut it in half like that. And they get hard over time as well, so that's why they leak. 
you try to use these without replacing them and they're gonna leak. So you can see like it's almost brittle. Get a nice fresh seal on there. That just pushes you straight into the sump plug. So that's gonna seal, you're gonna have no oil leaks from that. So first off, you've got to pre-fill your filter to make sure that this uh, engine don't start up dry. You can obviously prime up the engine if you want uh, by turning it over without the coil pack or the fuel pump plugged in so it doesn't start up and that will get oil pressure up before you start it. Uh, always do that with the Subaru engines because the Subarus are notorious for running dry and they spin the bearings so quick on the Subarus that you ain't even got a chance and the engine's damaged already. That's why the new builds end up having uh, bearing problems after a couple hundred miles and it's down to the person who actually started up the car. It's one of the reasons that I don't like to do engine builds and um, give the engine straight to someone and let them put it in themselves. I prefer to fit it. Uh, and the reason being is, or at least be there when they're fitting it, because um, I've had people, I've seen it before, not with my engines, but other cars, and they've started the engine up, maybe without oil in it. They've started up dry, uh, and it's obviously damaged the engine straight away. Then they're just gonna blame that on the engine builder, because the engine builder don't know what they've done. They're gonna send it off with uh, no oil in it, and the bearings are gonna be shot. They're gonna blame that on the engine builder, and they're gonna get a bad reputation for it. Uh, and there's loads of horror stories out there. People can't, you know, be trusted to fit the engine themselves. So I always want to be there with the first startup on the engine because the first startup on the engine is probably the most important part. So you see there, we're just priming up the filter. So you can see that that oil just literally disappears inside there. So you make sure you get loads of oil in there. Once that's done, you can get that on. I think one of the reasons that I love these cars so much is the simplicity of them. So uh, the oil filter is literally just in the driver's side well, just turn the steering wheel. Do this up double handed, as, as basically as tight as you can do it and that's absolutely perfect, never leak, never will. So as I've showed you in the past as well, the dipsticks on the Z20 LET and the Z20 LEH are different because the Z20 LEH runs more oil capacity due to its oil squirters. So you can see here on the left you've got the Z20 LET, on the right you've got the Z20 LEH. You can clearly see obviously they're level up here. But down here the, the Z20 LEH has to run more oil capacity because it's got the oil squirters that are obviously pumping a lot of oil up into the piston so there's a lot of oil that ain't in the sump so they want you to run more oil from stock so you can see here if you're on I don't know level 1 or level 2 on your Z20 LET dipstick you're actually just about on the dipstick on the leh so you can see here when that's full you're actually running more oil um, so obviously you're going to use a lot more oil in the z20 leh when you're doing an oil change uh, but also when you're doing a forge build on the z20 let and you're using oil squirters from say a bmw and you ain't using the z20 leh block you're going to need the dipstick as well because otherwise you're going to be underfilling that engine. All the oil is going to be up in the uh, top of the engine. And when you're going around hard cornering, especially on track, you're going to end up with low oil pressure. So that's just one thing to think about. <laughs> Right, so a quick update on the red GSI. I've just uncovered it for the first time in a long time. I was going to start it up, but I just realised it's run out of fuel. Um, you can see here it's as clean as when I put the cover over the top of it. So the plan with this now is I've rubbed a couple of bits off of it, which I'm going to actually replace. So you can see I've rubbed the shocks, but I'm replacing with coilovers. Um, obviously putting on different brakes on here as well now. So uh, even though these were lacquered up when they was brand new, you can see it's got a little bit of surface rust on them. Um, but obviously the discs, I've got brand new discs that are going to go over the top of them. So a quick update on the red GSI, as you can see, I've just uncovered it for the first time in a little while. Um, and I was just about to give it a start up so I can let you hear it starting up. But uh, it's actually run out of petrol, which is quite annoying. Um, so I'm going to get some petrol for that and we'll start it up in the next episode. Just want to give you a little update on what I'm going to be doing with it. So I've robbed a few bits off it already. Um, I've took the, the shocks and the uh, brakes off of it. You can see here, even though these were brand new and I've put lacquer over the top of them, they've still got some surface rust on them. But everything else is holding up absolutely perfectly. Um, so I'm going to be putting some coilover in here which i'm going to show you i'm going to rebuild them um get them 
bolted on so we can get the car down on the ground the idea of this is now to get this car running get it driving so we can actually do the paint on it um, I'm really looking forward to driving it it's going to be a really nice car obviously everyone's seen underneath as well uh, and um, yeah that's basically an update I want to give you on this because it's been missing for the channel for a little while uh, you can see it's very clean under here still and you see the amount of work that's been gone into it if you haven't seen that go back and look at the previous episode so we're going to be getting on with this in the next few episodes well so as I just showed you I robbed some bits off the GSI but that's because I had bits to replace that were even better so you see I've, I robbed the VXR brakes off it I got these Brembo four pots to go on there now I bought these brand spanking new the whole kit uh, maybe two years ago now uh, and they were silver at the time and I painted them red and uh, obviously brakes get an absolute beating they come with the adapter brackets uh, I'll chuck a new set of pads on there and they'll be good to go so what I'm going to do is obviously rub them down give them a clean up give them a little lick of paint so they're absolutely fresh again probably get a new fitting kit with some stainless pins so they ain't stuck in there because these ones are obviously the original pins the ones that come from Renault and they start to corrode over time so you can get stainless ones for them if not I'll just get some brand new ones anyway they're only cheap um, and you can see obviously I started to scrape off the paint off of them um, because it was silver underneath because I wanted to match them up against the car just see if I liked them in silver or black or whatnot so I'm just going to keep them red to go with the theme of the car also we've got some coilovers these are gas adjustable coilovers obviously you've got the adjuster nut on the end that adjusts the dampening in uh, these are going to go on there as well so just cleaning up the springs and um, re bearings put new bearings into the top mounts uh, just give them a wipe down they're all locked to exactly the height that I want anyway so there's no problem you can see how fresh they are no leaks or anything from them so these are going to be going on the car um, probably in the next couple of episodes so that's what to look forward to um, I have brand new discs as well to go with these obviously I just got to buy some decent pads so you can see here it's going to be a nice brake setup um, if you've run these brakes before you know how good they are um, and the most important part about these brake kits is using a decent set of brake pads so these are just a, a Brembo performance pad which weren't that great but when you match them up with say a race pad or you know a, a pad that's got a good initial bite uh, say a DS2500 or an RS29 uh, carbon the rain something like that you get the max performance out of these brakes um, another good upgrade to them is actually to upgrade the master cylinder to the vxr one uh, because it gives you a little bit more clamping pressure because obviously they had bigger brakes you can see this is the lot that's going to be going on in the future so this is the first time to see the channel go and have a subscribe go and have a look around the channel at the previous videos that are on the channel plenty to watch while I'm making videos, there's uh, 150 videos or something you can go and watch. RS Turbos, Evos, GSIs, whatever you want. Leave a comment in the comment section what you want to see. So also the Evo engine's patiently waiting over here in the corner. You can see that I haven't bolted anything more on it since the last episode because I'm waiting for some bits from Japan um, and America. We've obviously got loads of bits to go on it, as you know, all this uh, lot over here. But one of the things that I wanted to show you is uh, we've got a new sump for it so you can see here on the right and uh, not brand new sump it's a second hand sump but you can see here these are from the later model um, Evos you can see they've got the baffles in them uh, Evo 7 I think 7 and 8 uh, and you can see on the one that come off the car there was absolutely no way that I'm going to be able to clean that properly this is all swore from the bearing material and uh, it's just going to get in all these crevices it's going to get behind all these baffle plates you literally have to drill it all out clean it out weld them all back on etc just to get this spotlessly clean it's absolutely not worth the risk for the sake of a sump even though it was really difficult to get one of these sumps uh, you have to buy them brand new but managed to get a second hand one i think they're like 300 quid brand new which is actually quite expensive for a metal sump I uh, managed to get a second hand one, a good one as well. Gonna give this, I'll give it a little wipe over. I'm gonna get a proper clean out with the uh, steam cleaner, and uh, that will be going back on the car. This one will not, this one will go in the bin. Um, the only difference between the Evo 5 and the uh, 6 oil returns. So, another thing that was an absolute nightmare to find for the Evo was a power steering pump. So, obviously, with the um, Astras, they're so much easier to get parts for. You can see here, I don't know why it's in leather, um, but. Um, this thing was so hard to track down so the one that's on the car you can see here, it's nice and fresh one that's on the car is leaking the bearings have gone in it it's all seized up 
um, you know you can get seal kits for it and everything but even a seal kit a genuine seal kit for this is really expensive so we managed to source this one you can see it's a very good one checked it all over uh, absolutely free play and it's going to look a lot better in the engine bay it come from a newer model car and uh, no leaks at all from this one so even though that was a very difficult to find uh, very expensive as well uh, we've got another power steering pump to put on the car oh my god look at the color on this thing i've never seen one of these before the new alpina the uh the actual green paint is absolutely beautiful it's a shame it's raining because you can't really see it but classic alpina wheels look at the size of the brakes never seen one of these in person yet what a beautiful car <laughs> 